strange new era is dawning. An era of revolutionary experiments. Wired torsos, chip-implanted brains, creatures of silicon and steel. Welcome to the age of cyborgs and androids. As humans become more machine-like and machines more human, the line between biology and technology is starting to blur. And in the process, we may just be reinventing the future of our species. Members of a lab at the University of Toronto have been pioneering the computerized lifestyle. They wear their own personalized systems full time. Computer, camera, optical display, all connected to the World Wide Web. You know, the computer and the clothing, but it's, it's really for The driving. most sophisticated rig is worn by the head of this unique lab, uh, no, Steve no, Mann. Sure. All you can see is a pair of sunglasses, but his computer is tucked into his pocket. The frame fitted with a miniature camera. His screen is projected directly onto his retina. Doesn't look too strange, right? For man and his band of student cyborgs, the larger question is not simply one of technology, but sociology. They have a utopian hope that their inventions can foster new ways for people to connect, a new vocabulary of shared experiences. I think it's quite, quite different and quite interesting because people make this world uh, of their own. It gives, it's a very existential principle of being able to create one's own world, mastery over one's own destiny and kind of a little bit of, a little bit getting back to the idea of a little bit of a self-created world. If Steve Mann is concerned about preserving a sense of community, it's because he sees what's coming, a wave that's about to break over our society, a digital wave that will shift the flow of information onto vast wireless networks with benefits and perils for the individual. It's the old song and dance for a new way of doing business a new way of living. Just how pervasive will it be? Computers, wireless communicators, they're no longer just technology, but fashion accessories. Everything from databases to diagnostic chips are being marketed as this year's hot items for the fashion forward. Soon, you too will be able to wear the internet, like a shirt or a necklace. Carry around vital information on a pendant. Check out the web on your glasses. Call up information on anything or anyone you want whenever you need it. Look, within 10 to 15 years, you're going to be walking down the street and your sunglasses or eyeglasses will have little cameras in the corner as in Mission Impossible. They'll scan the faces of every person passing by, look up their faces on some face registry, commercial face registry, and supply captions underneath every person walking past you. Their name, two or three sentences from their self-chosen bio on, biography on their website, plus, if you so choose, um, dissenting opinions by their ex-spouses. And that it'll all be available. Now, what does this mean? This is certainly going to horrify some of the people who are sitting there listening to this. But stop and think. The cameras are extensions of human vision. The databases are extensions of human memory. Are you honestly going to stop them? But if we embrace this cautiously, then we'll have nothing more threatening than a return to the old village that our ancestors lived in, in which they knew everybody and knew everybody's reputation. 
only now instead of 1,000 people in the surrounding area, which our brains and eyes can handle, our augmented brains and eyes will be able to know the reputations of anyone we meet in a world of 10 billion fellow citizens. There's a sense in which in going back to a situation where people's lives are more open because of the electronic surveillance, we kind of go back to what we had in a small town, but we don't have the social inhibitions against abuse of that information. So we've come full circle, but having been stripped of civility. Recent studies estimate that in the coming decade, our environment will be fitted with thousands of wireless devices for every human. Security cameras, microphones, traffic and environmental sensors, each with a microprocessor brain. They'll form a planetary web, billions of monitors, managing the flow of people and resources. delivering enormous quantities of data to anyone who wishes to tap in. Will this web become intelligent in its own right? And what will it mean for us as individuals? The cyborg revolution is not turning out the way we once thought. As we steadily merge with our technological inventions, the focus is not superbodies or replacement parts, the ability to survive in space. Instead, the focus is our expanding relationship with the computer. The invention of devices that enhance our senses and minds and knit us together in ways we've never imagined. Right now, we are witnessing an event that is of, evolution, of an evolutionary significance that is equivalent to that when single-celled organisms join together to form multi-celled organisms to create all of the, the animals and plants on the Earth today that we are aggregating into a superorganism that is glued together by all of our technology and it can be seen most organically in the, in the Internet, which almost has a life of its own. Well, this is just the beginning. Imagine where this is going to be 100 years from now, 1,000 years from now. This is a, a length of time that is just an instant in terms of evolutionary time, and yet it will be enough to radically transform everything about life and it is no surprise that the powers of this superorganism are now feeding back and are reshaping who we are and changing our very selves. As we step out into the future, our wearables in place, our chips implanted within us, the possibilities of a cyborg life spread out before us. great river of information will flow all around us. Will we choose to tap into this vast stream of data and shared experience? this new world swallow us up, stripping us of autonomy and privacy? Or will it free us in ways we can't imagine? The cyborg future is still being written.